Hi, my name's Bob Greenier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on with the NOVA reactor testing. So you may have seen our previous videos where the reactor that Dr. George Eagley had built for us and he brought for testing, initial testing, uh, it didn't perform quite as uh, was hoped and we identified a number of reasons why that might be. He said that the carbon was wrong, it needed to be non-conducting, uh, that he had brought and also, or that we were using, that was supplied by his co-worker and that the reactor had a, a mesh on the front and really that wasn't optimising uh, the sound or the microwave concentration and certainly we identified that there was a lot of microwave leakage in that experiment set. Anyway, the previous uh, few weeks before I'd been to a conference uh, in Graz in uh, uh, Austria and there were a number of people there because it was a new energy conference and there were a number of people there making claims of over unity. I asked some very simple but tough questions of some of the presenters. Uh, for instance, there was one uh, claimant uh, from Italy who was pro uh, had a, a system that was hydraulically based and it said it was had producing something like 28% excess electricity or electric. Uh, 28% uh, excess power when actually it was just electrically powered uh, and so I said why don't you close the loop and there was no satisfactory answer. Anyway a number of people came up to me afterwards and took uh, uh, information about the MFMP and how they could contact us and find out more about the project. That has borne some fruit and I can now report that the MFMP has within its possession the most advanced Nova reactor, a supernova reactor that was built during the four year or so period uh, of working with Dr. Eagley. Uh, the group from Switzerland had uh, representatives at this conference. They had seen how I was, um, let's say, uh, not very tactful and quite merciless with the, uh, the claimants, uh, but straight down the line uh, in asking these questions. They had gone and learnt about the MFMP and they had seen our research and also the research uh, with the NOVA reactor and they had decided that they would be happy to loan the reactor, the end of their uh, research, uh, previous research into this area uh, to the MFMP. So uh, we're put in a situation now where uh, we have a reactor that Dr. George Eagley has been testing recently and uh, I will share some data that I've been uh, shown uh, where uh, the reactors had a new front put on it and it has uh, done a number of tests with different resonators and the samples have gone for uh, um, isotopic uh, analysis and there appears to be some isotopic, isotopic shifts there but we'd like to keep the chain of custody uh, within the project. Uh, so that, that reactor seems to be performing better now. However, we now have this new reactor, and I'm going to show you later in this video uh, how it fires up. But it's really, really exciting because the value that's uh, encapsulated in this reactor uh, is, I don't know the specifics, uh, but it would seem that the um, the value in the reactor, the amount of uh, investment that went into it, the engineering design and so forth by this uh, group is more than the entire amount of uh, donations we've received uh, since starting the MFMP more than five years ago. So really it's a shortcutting of the process and what's really really exciting for me is uh, this means we don't have to go through those four years of uh, trying to improve and trying to improve, we can go straight to this version uh, and it allows for um, uh, frequency input and uh, power uh, variation input and this will allow us to do a, a couple of things. One, we'll be able to start from where uh, Dr. George Eagley left off a couple of years ago and also we will be able to, uh, and this is also very exciting for me also, is to uh, attempt to replicate Norris Peary. Now, Norris Peary, if you had seen the previous interview that I uh, had with him earlier this year, sadly he's passed away 
in August. But anyway, I had an in interview with him, a phone interview. And I think it was two microseconds on, 10 microseconds off. And I would like to see if uh, we can create a modified head to this reactor, which, which again, you'll see in the rest of this video. A modified head where we can insert, say, a quartz um, uh, cylinder, uh, which is sealed outside of the reactor, and we can put a glow discharge in there and whatever fuel types in between. So um, we would need some assistance with um, maybe uh, someone who's an expert or knows of where to find a controllable uh, high voltage um, uh, discharge kind of controller uh, and uh, maybe some people with CNC expertise that could take the <clears throat> existing head and make a new head block for us. Um, so we want to be able to look into the reactor uh, and maybe do uh, some spectral analysis and have this um, uh, core that goes across and what Norris Peary was doing was he was taking palladium wire electrolytically loading it in deuterium and then he was glow discharging uh, across the uh, the uh, cylinder and he was pulsing two microseconds on and, and ten microseconds off of uh, a microwave uh, from a standard 2.45 gigahertz magnetron which is what this has <clears throat> um, and he was uh, apparently seeing every element in the periodic table. So next year we have effe effectively a fast track uh, to the most advanced type of Eagly reactor and uh, we're looking forward to a cooperation there and also permission to make ad additions and modifications to the, uh, uh, the reactor uh, in order to replicate Norris Peary. So static field dynamic uh, microwave field, ability to change frequency of pulses and amplitude of pulses. So thank you for listening. Uh, the second part of this video, I will um, show uh, the, the reactor and the controller itself. And then uh, I'll just show you um, uh, an example of it firing up. The great thing is there was no microwave leakage. Um, <clears throat> I feel much more comfortable using it. And uh, so let's go and see it. So here it is. At the end of this video, we'll show you it being fired up. But just to look at the controller, uh, in the video you'll see in a minute, uh, you'll see how these are operated. Um, there's uh, an overall power setting and a modulation. Uh, and we can use a signal generator to uh, vary the uh, maximum power that can be delivered to the reactor. Um, so uh, this allows us variation of the uh, intensity. And then round the back, uh, we have uh, an input here. And this will allow us to pulse on and off the uh, microwave uh, magnetron. Uh, the output to the magnetron has a little uh, uh, lead here. Uh, and uh, that goes into our magnetron here, which is a standard one from a uh, microwave and uh, the cooling fins here there's this uh, Dell server uh, uh, cooling fan here which clips on uh, something like this however this is broken so we're going to get in fact we've ordered some of these um, uh, some second-hand ones of these so that we can have the cooling uh, that limited as in the test that you will see in a few seconds Okay, so this is the waveguide in here, and in the later video you'll see how that's cut out inside. And this is the cavity itself, and in there there's a spherical cavity, and you can see there's a reactor uh, poting, uh, core poking out here. And this is made of fused quartz, like you saw in our previous tests. Now, um, this will allow us to do supernova type testing. Uh, it cuts out all the problems uh, that we had uh, with leakage, as you'll see. Uh, in our previous round of uh, basic NOVA testing. Uh, it's also more efficient because it's spherical, so uh, the resonance of the, the microwaves are uh, much less losses involved. Um, but what I would like to do for the Norris Peary replications is to uh, have a new front cast, uh, uh, or rather uh, milled, and uh, to have uh, 
some sort of port, maybe say for instance from here all the way through to here uh, uh, with whatever it is we need to stop the microwave leakage out and some maybe some sort of nylon uh, insert there to ensure that any uh, charge that builds up within the fuel can uh, not leak out in any way and then what we do is like put this is another fused piece of quartz but just a straight uh, cylinder going through with some sort of swage lock on the end and then having a couple of electrodes um, and then either doing glow discharge uh, through a fuel um, or just through space uh, or glow, glow discharge and then maybe we can even oscillate this in some way um, uh, physically uh, and also to have maybe a, a point and a flat and, and do maybe a shoulders arc uh, discharge like pulses down here so various ways we can think of uh, using this uh, i.e. static field uh, glow discharge uh, within the uh, magnetrons pulsed and uh, a modulated pulsed uh, output that would be equivalent to a, a peary replication and we would need to put say a piece of electrolytically loaded uh, uh, palladium in there to do a replication of peary but to do something which was more like um, shoulders uh, we would have uh, some sort of EV generator uh, which we can uh, all work together to learn a lot about and uh, to eject and this would go through uh, a controlled uh, microwave field in there and then because these bolts allow you to fix it in various positions we can have it at various angles relative to the uh, magnetron head and maybe that uh, depending on how um, this is front piece is made we can do some orientation this way uh, and this way with respect to the center uh, but lots needs to be thought about that but we can do uh, basic testing before then but we do need to get this uh, uh, new fan and uh, power supply for it um, and that will allow us to run for more than a couple of minutes but apparently it runs very well for long periods of time and as you'll see it's very quick to start up uh, with no make microwave leakage. Now I'm just going to show you the type of um, signal generator we'd like to get. So there's a couple of skills we need again just to uh, go over that. Need help with uh, casting a new or rather CNCing or lathing a new front end uh, and, and, and some intelligent design about how you can put uh, a resonator spanning the, um, the cavity. Then uh, we need some design of uh, high voltage glow and uh, controllable spark discharge. Again, that might come in pulses. We might be able to use the pulse generator here that's just a simple uh, square wave pulse generator that you'll see in the video later. Uh, uh, and that will give us testing of Eagly, uh, Peary and shoulders to a certain extent. Uh, so it's really quite exciting, really incredible piece of kit. Uh, we thank the people that have um, entrusted the MFMP uh, with this on loan. We hope not to break it. Uh, one thing that's reassuring is that these are standard uh, magnetron parts. This is absolutely not standard. Um, so I will show you the uh, signal generator. Alan identified this unit. It's uh, about 320 euros, excluding VAT, and, uh, but it has got sh free shipping. Uh, looking a bit closer, uh, you've got your two outputs. Uh, so we could have, um, for instance, a uh, pulse uh, um, coming out uh, for turning the magnetron on, um, at 5, 10, 20 kilohertz or whatever, uh, up to whatever, 100 kilohertz. Uh, obviously it's chopping the, the signal that's coming out and then um, uh, we can have the other output uh, modulating the output uh, power. So I think we can achieve everything we need to with this uh, and then uh, something to control the glow or spark uh, discharge I think would be an optimum solution. So without further ado uh, I'll show you it firing up. Okay, I'm here with David and uh, we're looking at the supernova and over here 
Uh, we've got the high voltage connection. And how do we do that then? This way. Goes in and you and twist it. You push, push it in and twist. And twist. And to okay. Un unlock to uh, uh, yeah. pull, pull it back and a for, uh, quarter. Okay, turn. cool. That's it. This is the high voltage. Yeah, excellent. That's all right. That's okay, fine. so what do we have here? What's this? It comes. <laughs> it this comes. Is, <laughs> this is uh, the modulation. Mm -hmm. Frequency modulator. Mm -hmm. come here. You see? Mm -hmm. Which needs another power source. Okay. So the frequency modulator has exactly. got this B and Z connector, and I guess we're connecting that on there like that. Okay. But it needs a power source. So this is just a standard sort of frequency modulator yes, device. Yes, okay. It. You can take another one if you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a moment, I have to open it, because we have to come here, that's all. Okay, so this is just, and can you change the function? I yeah, mean, I can see, oh, I see, this is moving the frequency. The frequency. The frequency. So is this uh, on-off frequency, or is this the kilohertz frequency? It's a kilohertz frequency. Of what? Is from it zero, from nearly zero, you see? Right, yeah. To up to up to uh, I think I know, twenty kilohertz. But is that like a duty cycle, like That's pulsing it on and then turning it off? Yes. Right. So would twenty yeah. kilohertz be permanently on then? Or two kilohertz, or, or twenty hertz, or, or one hundred hertz, or whatever. Okay. Okay. According according like Egli wanted to have. Mm -hmm. We just want do uh, didn't want to to. Pour it out. That's why we. Mm -hmm. So you got a preloaded. Uh, preloaded. Quartz. We tested. We tested it with this. Okay. And yeah. the only point is, if you put it in, to have um, the, uh, the pencil lead somehow somewhat like this. So, so it's spanning the field. Yes. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. And then the next step will be without. So this is, whoa. Yeah, this was just a screw. It's the bolt. Uh, so this is okay. the spherical resonation resonator. Resonator. <laughs> Get my worms mixed up. You got the magnetron here, and there's a cooling fan to sit on the back of the magnetron here. It's like a, yeah. a GPU fan cooler to go on there. So we did those two screws. Yeah. We could even turn it on, and but you you can do it by yourself. It, mm -hmm. But you do not have. I think you do not have a twelve volt. I do. Let me you see. Do? So David's saying that you need to note the position of the sphere, right? Exactly. That it is so. down there. That's that's like this. Oh, okay. So it's got to be almost right. at the back end, is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then I put the upper screw in. Upper screw. Yeah. And. Fasten the first one, mm -hmm. and this position shouldn't turn then, otherwise it won't mm -hmm. be up. Four screws are more than enough, because it's metallic, metal on metal, mm -hmm. and it's no leak. If you have metal on metal, there's no leak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. Tighten it up, yeah. No, that's not possible. Yes, it's certain. Not very fast. Fasten a little bit, not mm -hmm. not too heavy. Like this. That's enough. It's good, but. And the last one. So, and then the position should be in the middle of the sphere, mm -hmm. which means you pull out and then. Push back to uh, up till till the end, yeah. and you see go that's, halfway that's in between way, and do half the way. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. Go half the way. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to sit that there and see if you get any uh, yeah. over over signal on the microwave. That's, you won't see any. 
any signal because there's really not too much. Now, let's control to turn off every switch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I uh, signalized it first. You have to be. Um, that's the cool, uh, that's the heating, the right. preheating of the magnetron, mm -hmm. and it should take ten seconds after switching in, mm -hmm. uh, switching on the the heating mm -hmm. around ten seconds or more. Mm -hmm. Then the second is the high voltage. Now mm -hmm. I'm turning on the high voltage, and the, and the third one is the ignition it, between those two. Two should be one second, not not simultaneously. Okay, what do we need the frequency generator on first? Later on, later on. First we have to ignite. Mm -hmm. So let's ignite now. Mm -hmm. The power is down. Now that's it. That's the modification. The power is down now. I normally start around in the middle, in the middle mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. So let's start. So one, one two. two. Okay. No ignition. Yes, ignites. And now you can take modulation on it. Four kilohertz. This is the amplitude. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can smell or sound, but you don't see any high degree of. And now it's enough because of the heat on the yeah. Because of the um, yeah, of the. Uh, Okay, so what you did there was you were tweaking the it, frequency. I was there. just you, you could listen it. Yeah, yeah. You could listen it. It, it I would in the I would re, um, uh, making the, the frequency. I was uh, just just coming up with the frequency like um, 20, 29 kilohertz and mm -hmm. down down mm -hmm. to zero. Mm -hmm. I came up from zero, one, etc. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah.